Hey guys, I'm Rascal999, welcome to my fourth C tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is a continuation from my second and third C tutorials, which are available um, somewhere on the right hand side, probably. Uh, I assume you've come from those tutorials. Uh, if you haven't, then I suggest you check them out. Um, they're on YouTube, they're quite easy to find. And um, this tutorial is going to focus on switch statements, um, the switch statement. So, let's get going. Um, in my last tutorial, the if statement, um, I was focusing on the if statement and its application in a program and how it's useful. Um, the method I um, implemented the if statement is or, yeah, the situation for which I use the if statement is all well and good, but there is a more suitable statement which can be used in place of the if statement here, and that is called the switch statement. Okay. Um, the switch statement is um, it basically takes it takes a variable and depending on what the variable is it will do a um, set of statements. Uh, the best way to demonstrate this is to actually do it, so let's get going. Um, switch C, because uh, C is the uh, user input. Uh, case 1. Um, so if, if, if C is 1, then do the following. A equals A plus B, in this case. And we want to break out of the switch loop, uh, the switch statement now, because um, the case a case has been met, so we don't need to be in the uh, switch statement anymore. Case two a equals a minus b. Break uh, case three a equals a times b. Break uh, case four a equals a divided by b. And break and close it off. Okay, so now we have <coughs> our switch statement. If c is 1, then do these commands. Uh, if c is 2, these commands. If c is 3, these commands. If c is 4, these commands. Okay, uh, now if we run that, uh, like so, and if we do 10 uh, plus 65, we have 75, and if we do uh, 12 and 3 divided by, we have that, and if we do um, 10 and 3 divided by, we get that. Okay, so that works fine. Um, as with the if statement, the if statement actually caught cases, um, the, the if statement calls, uh, caught instances where 1, 2, 3, and 4 were not entered. Um, 1, 2, 3, or 4 were not entered, so if we did 10 and 10 and then some random number, um, again it just prints out A. This isn't a uh, desirable uh, effect, so let's let's fix that. Um, in the case where none of the cases are met, uh, we can do something called a default. So a default case, and in the default case we'll do uh, invalid input new line and instead of breaking we're going to completely leave we're going to completely leave the program and we're going to return 1 okay the reason I'm returning 1 is because I'm uh stating that the function did not um complete successfully there was a problem in this case the user entered um uh, bad data data which wasn't valid so we're returning 1 I probably should have done this in my last tutorial but I didn't so I apologize for that um but it's not it's not a vital thing. I don't actually need to put one there. I could put zero if I wanted to. But you know, for the sake of uh, learning, I suggest you put a one if you're um, leaving the main function um, upon an error. So we'll save that and run it again. Twelve plus ninety. See so that works fine. And then if we do uh, ninety and eighty-seven. And we do five, which isn't there. We have invalid input. Okay, so that works fine. Um, that's all I'm going to focus on in this tutorial. It's quite a short one. Um, my next tutorial is going to um, introduce while loops because uh, the next thing I want to be able to do is uh, keep looping through this program until the user doesn't want to anymore. Because at the moment it just quits after one operation. After one operation. So uh, we'll fix that in the next tutorial.
Okay, uh, I'm Rascal999. Check out my blog at rascal999.co.uk and I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Okay, bye bye.